Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So on the previous video, I show you how to create these comments and you you probably went through and, and tried to replicate it or you might have cloned the repository. So also I wanted to thank you for, for watching this video. I, I saw that a lot of people were watching it, so thank you very much for doing that. And what I want to do in this video is I want to show you another scene that I created based on based on this one. But instead of doing comments, I did a fire scene. So let me double click it and I'll open it. And I'm, I'm simply using the same structure that I, that I had on the other one, except I tweak some of the effects to make it look like this. You can also see that the fire is not going straight up. There's also, you know, you can kind of get some particles on the side. There's also some alpha on the very top where the particles are are going away so I did a lot of tweaking to make it work like this and I want to show you the setup and also show you some of the colliders that I set up in this scene so I'm gonna go and go to the fire and in the visual effects so I have the same setup that I had last time so I have my spawn which has a rate of 25,000 and on the capacity I still have a lower number I don't I didn't think I did I was gonna need a bigger you know a bigger number of particles for this particle effect i think 1426 was just perfect and i did tweak a little bit of the changes here so this starts at five and then 2083 so the capacity component changed a tiny bit on the position sphere i have some changes i changed the radius so you can kind of see that if i change the radius we can make you know we can make make it a lot bigger you can even do this and that's still create a really cool effect so let me just go back and undo. And on the minimum, I changed the minimum value to 0.5 and then the maximum is 1.8. So that's the lifetime on the, on the randomization. Then on the update control, I have a lot of different components at it. So I still have a vector field force, but ex in instead of actually going in the direction that the comet was going, I make some changes in here. So I change the center. I also have the size change where we're going on the Y, so you can kind of see that, that it's actually heating up. Let me undo that. So the force that is happening is happening on Y, on the positive direction. And I also changed the intensity, which is 6.59. The drag is one. So these numbers don't need to be perfect. That th th Those were the numbers that I like. So a lot of times I will go in and you know make a change and then tweak it and make another change. So I would recommend that you do the same. I don't think you need to, you know, get these numbers just right. Just make the particles look like how you want them to look like in your own game. Okay, perfect. So then the other thing that I started to learn about was colliders. So why do I need to use colliders? Well, I didn't want, if I don't have this, so if I disable all these colliders, I'm going to show you how it looks like. So I'm going to disable both. I have three sphere colliders. And let's just wait until everything compiles. And there we go. So that doesn't really look right because it's a stray, it's a cylinder pretty much what I'm using. And it doesn't really look good because it, you know, a uh, fireplace is really not like that. It's not perfect symmetrically. So what I, what I did is I started adding colliders to simulate, you know, so you can now see that I having, you know, on this side I have a collider. And if I go here, let me increment the increment this guy and I'm going to clear the console. Looks like I got an error for some reason. So let me go here and also enable this one. Perfect. And I'm just going to go move this to the side a little bit. Looks like I'm getting a warning on the gizmos. Normally it shows me a gizmo that allows me to move the collider from one point to another so let me let me do let me look at something here which i'm getting a warning local values require targeting oh okay i see so if you can't really select the gizmos you have to go to the inspector actually the hierarchy and select the you know select the fire the component where you want where you apply the particle visual effect to then go back to the fire and you can kind of see that now I'm seeing, let's see, I'm still not seeing it. Let me bring the hierarchy. And if that works, 
So that is my fire. So if I move the fire from left to right, I can move that. Perfect. And let me go back here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the fire. This this works sometimes when I when I do that. And then I'm gonna go to the fire again and then click on edit. So it opens up a new visual effect graph. There we go. And now I'm just gonna snap it in place. You can now see that that resetted everything, and now I can see I can see my collider. So anytime you have issues like that, if you close Unity and reopen it with that tab, what I do, I close it, go to the component that has the particles, and then click on Edit to edit the visual effect, and then things start to work again. This is a new feature of Unity, so I'm sure they're going to be fixing some of those bugs in the next in the next releases. So now let's go back here and select the select the component. So you can now see that. I'm getting uh, a collider sphere. If I if I select this one, you can see that I'm getting one on the on the left. And if you select the one, this one doesn't show because what I did is I have a ran, a random number generator, which is animating the x value. Because what I what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of simulate. So what it's doing is actually going, you know, from left to right to simulate some of the movement on the particles. So but if I go to this one. For instance, and I say I, I moved it, so you can see that it creates a really, really cool effect. And what I can also do is I can change the size if I wanted to. Now I'm getting a straight up line, which doesn't really look realistic, so I'm, I'm going to undo. So if I want the fire to be a little skinnier, I could do you know something like that. I can also go to my other one, and I can move it a tiny bit. There we go. So that changes the, the look and feel, so I'm going to undo those. Because I like how I had it. I can also move this up. I can I can scale it. So if I move it up and then move it to the left. So this is what the other one is doing. What the one that you can't really see is doing is actually going from, from left to right and creating and simulating the movement by by animating the X value. So the way that I did it, I have a random number generator, which you can add by just right clicking and create node. And once you add the random number, you can tell it if you want the seed to be the particle, if you want this to be constant, and you can also set the minimum and the max. So how I got the minimum, so if I move this to the left, I can see the negative value showing. If I move it to the right, I can see the positive value showing as well. So let me just undo all these, bring it back. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm saying, okay, the minimum value is going to be negative 3. The maximum value is going to be 3. And then all I did is just drag the random number result to the x value, which is cre creating the effect that you're seeing right above it. Perfect. So the other thing that you can do with this that is really, really cool is they have other types of colliders. So if I wanted to create another type of collider, I can go here and say create block. And I can go into collision. And let's say that I wanted to add, instead of you know, instead of doing a sphere, I wanted to add a cylinder. So I can add a cylinder, I can click on, click on it, and you can now see the cylinder showing, which is really cool. I can resize it, I can I can actually move it up, and you can see that it's now our fireplace is getting cut off. I can scale it, and there we go. And I can also change, so if I want to change the height, I could do that. And I can move it up. So so you can create different effects with this. This is just really cool, a way to for you to modify the the basically the collision of the particles. So I'm gonna remove that so that we have our fireplace looking great. So the other thing that I did is I've been posting about different effects that I created in here via Twitter. And in Twitter you can probably see that I have that I have some different effects. And not only different effects, but I also have different colors. So, because I thought, well, if this is a fireplace, I might be able to use it for some other thing. So, the other thing that you can do is you can change the gradient. So, if I want to maybe have a different type of color here, maybe, you know, more of a spooky type fireplace, you can do that. And, and I can change all of these and it's going to reflect the changes. So, let me remove that. I'm going to show you a different trick. So, I'm going to go back. So the other thing that I did to this scene is I also added post-processing effects, which is why you see you know, a little bit of a big netting around, you see a little bit of a glow. So if I go to my main camera and then go to the inspector, you can see that I have some post-processing effects added. So the, if I remove the bloom, 
you can see that it now looks boring. It doesn't really have a lot of depth into it. So if I bring it back on, now it's starting to take life and you're like, wow, that really looks great. So if I change the intensity, you can change the intensity of the bloom and you can see that it now, so I can change it down, I can move it up. It depends on how you want it to look in, in your game. The other thing that I did is I also added vignetting. So you can kind of see if I wanted to like really focus on that area, I could do that. Or if I wanted to change the vignetting, you know, some of the vignetting uh, values, so I can enable the color. And maybe this will be a, a red vignetting because the intensity, the vignetting is also the reflection of the fire color. So you can do you can do some of, some of that. I I like what I had, which is more of a black, simple. I like colors that are minimalistic. So that's my style. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it back to how that was. And you can have other things like chromatic ab 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 variation, which I can't pronounce still. <laughs> so if you if you add that, you can see it's actually not making a lot of changes to the scene because there's not a lot of things going on in the scene. So that's probably why I didn't enable it. And the color grading, it's really, really cool. And if we go into color grading, the one that I'm using right now is the ACES mode. And I can actually change the, the temperature. And you can see that, that it's really giving it a really cool look. The particles look just amazing. Just with that small change, I can move the temperature up. And you can now see that that is changing that as well. Let me undo. I can also modify the tint. So if I modify the tint value, I'm also getting some different changes. I can modify both, getting some different changes. So I'm going to do undo that. Also modify the tone if I want it to you know, be brighter or I want it to be you know, a little darker. Then you can make some, some of those changes. So you can change a lot of these properties, add different effects. There's a lot more effects that I'm not covering right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this scene in GitHub for you to download. And it's going to include everything. I also made changes to the other scenes. They were called v, VFX1 and VFX2. Actually, it was VFX underscore 1, VFX underscore 2. So the 1 for number 1 is now called Basic. VFX underscore 2 is now called Space. And the reason I did that is because it makes more sense. So you can go in and say, OK, I want to look at the basic scene. So you can see the basic effect. If I want to look at the space scene, you can look at the, you know, the comet with the stars. If you want to look at the fire scene, then you can look at that. And I'm going to be adding a lot more effects to this. I think there's a lot of things that I still need to learn that I want to teach everybody. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And don't forget to share and subscribe to the channel because it's going to allow me to create videos like this. And like I always say, better videos like this. Thank you.